you also don't have a price point to compare it with. So you get yourself a $50 pen. So there's discussions like that and you tend to like inspire each other within the community. And I think that's one of the reasons why. I so one of the things to consider, of course, is quality control. Having said that, sounds a bit controversial. I have Hi, this is Kai from Kikai Craft and today we are not going to unbox anything. We're not going to swatch inks. We're going to talk about very specialized pens called bespoke pens. So bespoke basically means a an item that is made for a very specific purpose, design, and person. So fountain pens that are called bespoke pens, also sometimes called customized pens, are pens that are designed, created, put together just for the end user or you because you will discuss the pens with the fountain pen um, makers. Now, bespoke pens include kit pens, which are pens that are uh, cut and prepared and all of that by one person, especially for you. And it also includes pens that are already ready-made and where the fountain pen artist just adds on to it. So um, the second version where the pens are already made, these are like, for example, Mont Blanc pens. So you get a Mont Blanc one for nine, you give it to a fountain pen artist and they add maybe Rushi onto it. Maybe they put a little painting on it. Maybe they put Raiden on it. So those are bespoke pens too, but we're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about what is loosely called kit pens. So kit pens are pens that are basically put together. Um, the body is put together. The length is put together. Nothing really, nothing much is really ready made in terms of the pen design. Um, so to give you a better idea of what I mean, let's start off with say this bespoke pen this is one of my first if not my first bespoke pen this is a the uh, bali beach mornings from pens by casey so this is how the pen looks so what was the process that i went through with casey to get this particular pen that is made especially for me first we had a discussion on the color that i wanted and the design that I wanted and what feeling or emotion or memory I had attached to it. So for this particular one, I was thinking more of Bali, where I lived for some time. I think that was three, four years. And I really like the resin and the wood combination. This is a hybrid because it makes me think of the Bali Sea and Rosetta Ocean and the, uh, the beach. And so I had a say in which colors I wanted. Um, I had a say in exactly which of the blanks I wanted when it arrived. So you can't always have the exact colors maybe that you want, but you can have choices. And so that was my choice. And then we had a discussion on the shape. Did I want a cigar shape? Did I want something with like flat ends? What did I want to do and how long? that I want it to be. So there was a discussion about that. Then we had a discussion even all the way to what section I wanted. So what color a section did I want? Did I want something that was more of this? Did I want it to be um, more of the resin part of it? He even asked me as to what shape I wanted on the section. So apparently there are different shapes to the section. So I showed him which type of section I was comfortable with and he um, and he cut it so that it would have that um, shape so I'd be very comfortable using this. Of course, right, just like any fountain pen, you also have a choice as to which nib grind you want. Now usually, but not always, they have Jovo or Bok, but I see a lot of Jovo number six on the pens that I'm looking at. So you get to choose, say, what grind you want. Uh, do you want a medium? Do you want a flex? Do you want a fine? What do you want? And you get to, some of the time, most of the time, you also get a choice as to what color of nib you wanted. So for this one, this had a Jovo nib. 
And I think this is a medium, although initially I asked for a um, flex, I think, from him. Okay, and the thing too with these pens is that the nibs are detachable and that means they're interchangeable with other nibs of that um, family, that line. So this is a Jovo number six. So I can get any Jovo number six nib that is also detachable and I can just interchange it. So, oops, <laughs> number one reason to get yourself a bespoke pen is its uniqueness. Because you get a lot of choices um, as to what part is what shape and how long and for what purpose, there will never be another pen like yours. Even if, for example, there were, I think, two to three blanks that kind of look like this, none will have the same pattern, none will have the same cut, none will have the same grain. So your pen is going to be quite unique. So this is Pens by Casey. He has a lot of other models, um, and that includes the Tasha Kuno. The Tasha Kuno, basically, you have your wood or your timber, and then you have a resin. Now, not the hybrid where it's all put together in the cast. For this one, part of it is timber and part of it is resin. So this is the timber part, and it's dyed timber, so it's wood, but it's dyed into, I think this is a purple. And then you have the resin part. For this particular one, this one is a gift to me. Thank you very much, Casey. But for this particular one, you could also have choices as to which timber you wanted and what uh, resin you wanted to pair with it. Casey will come with suggestions, but at the end of the day, you choose. You choose the shape, you choose the length, you choose the section. He will share with you what the possible limitations are, and you get to have a discussion as to how you want the pen to uh, look like. So again, you have a detachable um, nib on this. This is another Jovo number six, and this is in fine, and I can exchange this with any other Jovo nib. So this one came with this, but we had an issue actually with the nib for this one. And so KC very nicely sent me, okay, I'm trying to look for it, sent me other nibs. We had an issue because one, it wouldn't write, and two, it wasn't exactly the nib that I uh, wanted. I think I wanted a flex one for that, and I got sent a non-flex uh, nib. So this one is a flex nib. So as you can see, you can just uh, exchange the nibs. Oops. Okay, things are falling. They're alive. Okay, so let's put that together. So again, uniqueness, and that it's fully customizable. Okay, this is a cool one, Tasha Quino. And you have a lot of variety to choose from. So Casey has a lot of like resin and wood um, materials in, um, in putting his pens together. There are other artists who, for example, use resin and say dried flowers. So this is from a maker in Poland. And these are the pens that uh, they make. There are a couple and they make these pens. So just to go through it, oops, yes. Again, when I had these pens made, I got a choice as to what shape I wanted them in, how long I wanted them. And again, they will discuss possible limitations uh, with you. And I got to choose, say, what flowers I wanted. So for this one, for example, I saw one of this, like a similar one on their site, and it had more black uh, leaves. I didn't want as many black leaves, and so they gave me an option, which they put into the cast. I also had a choice as to what color I wanted the section to be in. The first time they shared a photo, I think it was very much yellow, but I wanted a little bit of like dark black or brown to go with it. So I had a choice with that. I also had a choice as to which nib I wanted with it. This one, hold up, let me open it for you. I mentioned the Bach nib earlier. This is from 
the block nib. So this oops, particular fountain pen maker uses block nibs on their pen. So as you will see, it's a bit different from the Jovo nib. So in case you're getting yourself kit pens, note that Jovo nibs and block nibs are not interchangeable. Okay, because the, the thread position is different and the landing position is going to be different as well. Okay, but with this uh, pen maker, you also got to choose the color of the nib, not just the nib grind, but also the color. So uh, for this one, there was like a gold, which I have. Um, then I was also, yeah, has to choose for this. This one is a silver block. I thought it worked quite well. And if I didn't like that, I could, again, interchange it with another block nib. This one is quite interesting because this one has a rose gold nib. This was actually a suggestion from the fountain pen maker. So they, uh, when they put this together, initially we were gonna go for like a gold block nib, but this is like gold plated, just gold colored block, block nib. But he, the person said, oh, we have a rose gold colored one. Did you want that? Because I think it works well with the color of the pen and yes it does and so there you are there's also like choices and discussions about the section on this one so that was quite good all right so yes uniqueness personalization and community so um just like with discussions with casey and from the uh, Polish pen maker. There were also discussions when I got these pens. These are the F Inks pens from the Philippines. So they are made in the Philippines. And so when I discussed this pen with Francesco, who owns the F Inks, he designs the pens, he talks to you about the pens. For this particular pen, the shape is already uh, designed by F Inks. So you, your choices would be the color of the pen. So there are varied like colors that you can have. There's like a darker blue, there are reds, etc. And I also got to choose this inlaid, like, I don't know what you call it, like a print on it. So I got to choose which one I wanted. I shared photos with him and he designed this particular like design pattern flower pattern for me and it matches say the whole look of the pen it's like some twine thing that goes around okay so for this one I got to choose the color I got to choose um this pattern and I got to choose the nib for it and in my discussions with Francesco ooh, super informative discussions there's like a lot of talk about uh, anodizing pens and titanium and shaping pens, etc. Um, one of the discussions brought about his titanium too. This is his second iteration of his uh, fountain pens. This is a pocket pen. I really like this because it is as long as a pocket pen when you post it. And when unposted and kept, it's so small and it's so easy to fit into the pocket. Now this pen was inspired by, this is based on what he said, by some discussions we had um, when I was talking about the baby from Mont Blanc. I was talking about how nice the threads are, how small it was, and how uh, long it came um, when you posted it. And so there's discussions like that, and you tend to like inspire each other within the community. And I think that's one of the reasons why I support a lot of the uh, independent pen makers who make pens on their own and with their own designs and um, how they also support each other. For example, KC of Pens by KC, these blanks, I'm not sure, if, I think they're poured, yes, by other companies. And what he does is he supports these companies by taking those blanks. So blanks are the bars or the rods that um, these makers make using resin or wood and he designs pens with these. So they support each other and we support their artistry. 
Um, also, hold up. There are other pants too that could be customizable, but sometimes um, you do just get choices on uh, their length and their nib size uh, when you visit pen shows. So this one is actually a kit pen by Promise of Spring. And I got this at a pen show. And so obviously it had to be like ready-made. But when you discuss pens with them, you can also ask them to go for a specific color and go for a specific like um, inlays is what you call them, like things that they put into the resin. Much like the dried flowers here for this one though, it's like glitter stuff that they can put in. If you also have prior discussions with them, you can discuss the shape that you want, the length that you want, the color like I mentioned, and what you want them to include. Oh, inclusions, that's the word I was looking for, into their resin. So this just happens to be like a purchase from a pen show, but if I had prior discussions with them, I could have had a lot more say in um, the color and the look of this pen. Same thing goes with this Endless Pens collaboration with the Tailored Pen Company. And this is another way to sort of create a bespoke pen. So the Endless uh, group, they wanted to, Endless Pens group, they wanted to put together like an exclusive for Manila Pen Show 2024. And they have this Cafe at Pandesal or Coffee and Bread um, three in one coffee, I think is what they called it. Um, and they had the tailored pen company put together or designed this blind for them, which is basically like coffee and cream. And if you see those glitters, I don't know if you see them, that's supposed to be the sugar. They also set these nibs with the coffee and the bread on it, right? And so this is a bespoke pen. And it was requested by one company, put together by that company and um, a blank maker in order to make pens that would sort of be an exclusive for an event. Mm. And the prices for these range from say $50 to $200 to maybe $300. And then you have those that are super expensive. Let's say you have your Nakaya. Nakaya pens are actually bespoke pens because when you go to their site and you buy directly from them you can choose the length you can choose the shape you can choose the finish so this is an urushi uh finish urushi yes an urushi finish there's like a whole slew of things happening here and i'll put a link up there so you can see my unboxing and my um, explanations this one you can choose what you want to do with a section so this one is painted. You can choose what nib you want. So for this one, it has a flex uh, nib on it. Actually, Nakaya pens came about because someone asked Platinum to put together an ebonite pen for them. And they just uh, painted it over and over with Irushi, had discussions with Platinum. Platinum thought, oh, that's a good idea. And so they put together the Nakaya group. Okay, so here are the pens. Again, why should you get a bespoke pen? First off, it's highly customizable. So they can put it together any which way you want within certain limitations, of course, like the length of converters, if you will, um, and what material they have. So highly customizable. So because it's highly customizable, it's also very unique. So these pens may look like other pens, but they will not never ever look exactly like any other pen. So even if this Promise of Spring pen was to be compared with others from this line, um, they will look very similar, but they won't ever be exactly the same. So very unique, customizable, unique, and they build community. Because when you make, when you ask someone or converse with someone as to how to make these pens, you have to interact with them and have full-blown discussions with them because you want to have a specific look and they have a lot of choices for you. And in the course of that discussion, you build connections and you build um, some part of the community like 
Hence, by KC was the first time I learned there are different shapes as to the section. Um, my discussions with Francesco so informative when it comes to like anodizing things and titanium and all of that. My discussions, for example, with the uh, Poland uh, maker, I learned about what can be done uh, in terms of like section, resin, and dried real flowers, how long it takes to make one. So I learned a lot of things as I conversed with them. And hopefully our interactions also brought a few inspirations towards them, ideas towards them. For example, for this one, um, I think part of our discussions made for a decision to make the pocket pen. And as part of that community building exercise for everyone, they also provide a lot of like extras, I suppose, like to enrich the experience for the end user. So let's look at this uh, Poland pen. So their boxes come like this. And when you open it up, not only will it come with a pen in a very nice sturdy box, it also comes with like a certificate of authenticity. It also comes with a short uh, description of the pen right and they also provide a pen case for the pens they send and these are like extras that sort of just enrich the experience for the end users these are the drevnam pisani pens um let's look at casey's pens for casey what he does is he sends it in this box at least at least his first pens i don't know how he sends it now um he has either this drawstring pouch that his uh, Tasha Kuno came in or this lovely little pen sleeve that the Bali Beach Morning came in. This is very cute by the way. So I think it's called the kimono style and you okay that's cat hair and you slide the pen in. Let's just have a look at how that goes. Ta-da! And then you put it to put it away. Okay, it also has this lovely Winnie the Pooh print on it. Um, again, to enrich the experience, oh yes, when uh, Pants by Casey sent me extra nibs, he had this little tin can too that he sent with this lovely logo on it. Uh, I really like this experience. This showed me how to store my um, nibs, like a possible way to store them. Mm, oh yes, the Endless Pens, for example, this one. It comes with its own sort of theme pouch. So it's from the Endless Pens group. And so this one came with this Endless Pens. And this actually matches the design on the nib, if you can see. Yeah. And so the idea, of course, is for you to put your pen in. So it looks like that. Okay, and of course, if you've seen my Nakaya post, um, you'll see that it came in this super nice uh, box with its own kimono. It's like super um, pretty setup. Okay, with F inks, oh, I didn't bring, okay, F inks come in really nice boxes. I just don't have them here right now. Uh, I'll put a link up there as to how the unboxing was. Really sweet packaging. Um, another plus, okay, so hold up. Um, it's highly customizable, it is unique, um, and it builds community. And of course, there's a lot of like ways that they find to enrich the experience. Another thing, of course, is that you can get different nibs. So there are a lot of Jovo nibs, Bach nibs available on the market. So Kenwright, for example, there's a Kenwright for Bach, Kenwright for Jovo. And because the nibs are interchangeable, you can find another one so you keep the pen body but you change the nib and that of course also adds to the experience but what are the things you need to consider all right so one of the things to consider of course is quality control having said that sounds a bit controversial i have to say that these pen makers do everything they can to make sure that you have good quality pens. But things can happen. And if you start um, 
buying pens from them when they are at their relatively early stages, you're also part of their learning curve. So for example, for these flower pens, I love them. They're very pretty, but this one, which is one of my favorite uh, pens from them. So I brought this around, maybe used it, filled it by that. I meant filled it twice. And one time when I was um, just removing it, um, just uncapping it to see if it had any ink on it, this whole thing just broke apart. Again, this has, um, this is, oops, this is more really of a learning experience for everyone, um, including the pen maker and me. So quality is a possible concern. I've also experienced receiving pens that did not have the nib that I wanted uh, or that I requested for, but when that happened, the pen maker quickly sent me a, the nib that I wanted. And so they, they do their best also to provide a good experience. But sometimes because, you know, there's a certain level of like learning that people also have to go through, there will be instances where it can get a bit frustrating or surprising. But again, like what I said, they're very open and supportive. So that is one thing you want to consider. Another thing you want to consider is the price. Because they're so unique and they're quite different from other pens that we see common in the market, you also don't have a price point to compare it with. So you get yourself a $50 pen, you get yourself a $200 pen, you get yourself a $500 pen or a $1,000 pen. You don't really understand, I guess is the word, where the um, costs go. You have some sort of like a general understanding, but since there's nothing to compare them to, you really don't know if you're getting them at a good price or what. Having said that though, I just wanted to add that in, but having said that, these pens usually cost a fraction of the cost that a lot of bigger companies ask for. Um, and they are made with the same materials. They're just not mass produced. Okay, so five points, right? First, get them because they're super customizable. You get them in different shapes. And some of them you can get to choose the shape, the color, the cut, everything. Um, you get them because they're unique. You'll never have any other pen that will be exactly what you have. And the third reason why you should get them is to build community. And the two considerations, the fourth and the fifth point, fourth one would be quality control. Um, because they are made by usually one person, two people, there might be certain things that, um, that might not go as perfectly as you want it to, as they wanted it to. Um, so there is that thing to consider. And lastly, price point. Um, you don't really know exactly how much they should cost, or at least a ballpark park figure for them. And so that might be something you want to think about before you purchase a bespoke pen. Okay, so this is a selection. I have my collection of bespoke pens. Some I had a lot of say in putting together. Some other companies had a lot of say in putting them together. I just like the way they put it together. Um, and some just a little bit in between where there's some parts that are already made, had no choice in that, but I had choices in design, in nib, in cut, etc. Okay, so I hope that you have taken away a few ideas notes, considerations from this discussion of bespoke pens, about bespoke pens. And when you get yourself one, I hope you really, really enjoy the experience. My favorite is still pens by Casey, super good guy, super nice. And he teaches you a lot of things also during your discussions. Uh, Francesco also provides like a lot of information. You get to really know the process. As you can see, I have a few favorite pen makers. There are still a few more pen makers that I would like to um, uh, be more familiar with. And I hope that I do get the chance to do that. Okay, so this is Kai 
from Kikai Craft. I'll put the links for some of these pens in the comment section below or the description below. Comment if you have any other suggestions like super recommended uh, bespoke pens that you think people should try out. We'd love to hear your recommendations and why. This is Kai from Kikai Craft. I hope that wherever you are, you're having a great day or a fantastic evening. Bye everyone. Thank you.